Welcome to Graphs of Derivatives and Antiderivatives by Conceptual Calculus. In this short video, we discuss the basic relationship between the graph of a function and the graph of its derivative. To keep things simple, the examples in this video involve straight line segments. We will consider curves in a later video. The function shown here in black is f of x. We want to sketch its derivative, f prime of x, in red. Starting from the left, we see that f of x goes down two units for each unit that it goes across. This means that the slope is negative 2, so the derivative is negative 2 because the derivative is the slope. This continues from the left edge of the graph to the point where x equals 3. To the right of x equals 3, our function f of x is horizontal. That means as it goes across by one unit, it does not go up or down. We could say that it goes up zero units for each unit that it goes across, so the slope is zero. This means that the derivative is zero. Exactly at x equals 3, the function has a sharp corner called a cusp. The derivative is not defined at a cusp, so we use an open circle to indicate that we are not including this point in the graph of the derivative. The function f of x stays horizontal, and so its derivative stays zero, until the point where x equals four. At that point, we have another cusp, so again, the derivative is not defined. To the right of x equals four, the function f of x slopes upward three units for every one unit it goes across, so the slope is positive three. This gives us the graph of the derivative. Notice that there is only one possible derivative for our function. The derivative is unique. Now we go the opposite direction. This time we have the graph of the derivative, f prime of x, in red, and we want the graph of the original function, f of x. Starting on the left edge, we see that the derivative is negative three. This means the function goes down by three units for every unit that it goes across. But goes down by three units from where? Where do we start? We can start anywhere. Since we're going to go down, I'll start near the top of my graph paper to make sure I have room to draw. With a larger sheet of graph paper, I would have more choices of where to start. We keep going down with a slope of negative three until we get to the point where x equals two. At that point, the derivative changes. To the right of x equals two, the derivative is positive one, so the function slopes upward one unit for each unit it goes across. This continues until x equals five, after which the derivative is zero. A slope of zero means the function is horizontal. That works perfectly well as a graph of f of x, but it is not the only graph we could have drawn. Remember that nothing in this problem told us where to start. We could start somewhere else. Once we pick the starting point, though, the shape of the graph is dictated by the derivative. We have to start out with a slope of negative three, keep that slope until x equals two, and then change to a slope of positive one. As before, when we reach x equals five, the derivative becomes zero, so the function is horizontal. We end up with two possible functions that have the exact same shape, but are at different heights on the graph paper. We could choose more starting points and get more graphs, each one just like the first two, but at a different height on the page. Because there is more than one function that has this same derivative, the antiderivative is not unique. You may remember that to shift a graph upward, we add a positive constant. We could think of the black graph as being the blue graph plus three. Alternatively, we could think of the blue one as being the black one plus negative three. You may have seen antiderivatives given with a plus c on the end. This is to indicate that we can shift the graph up or down by some constant without changing the slopes, so it still has the same derivative. Thank you for watching Graphs of Derivatives and Antiderivatives by Conceptual Calculus.